What's up? Are you a notary who has been thinking about adding apostilles to your notary business? Well, guess what? This training is just for you. We are going to cover the apostille basics so you can start adding this to your notary business. And if you are new to my channel, please be sure to subscribe, like this video, and share it with a friend. All right? We are going to get into the apostille training so you can learn the basics. You might need to watch this um, a couple of times, rewind, do whatever you need to do, but I can guarantee guarantee once you do this you should know the basics of apostille all right let's go ahead and get into it Alright, what's up out there to all of my fellow gold diggers? This is your girl Rita, also known as the self-proclaimed gold digger. If you are new to my channel, I am a dual commission notary for both Georgia and South Carolina, and I absolutely love doing apostilles. And if you have been trying to see how to incorporate this into your business, then this is the training for you. We are going to cover the basics of apostilles. As you can see, I have titled this presentation as Apple Steel 101, the ABCs of Apple Steel. The reason why I did this is because if you can understand the basics of doing an Apple Steel, then you will know the right questions to ask. You will know the right steps to take, but you have to know the basics, okay? You have to know those starting points or whatever. And that's why I call it the ABCs. Just like when you know your ABCs, then you can start making words and then those words can turn into sentences and that Kind of thing so these are the basics that will allow you to be able to expound, expound upon and be able to do different types of apostilles all right and i'm going to try and keep this training in less than 30 minutes okay i'm actually shooting for about 20 minutes so we'll see how everything goes so let's go ahead and get started but before we get into it, of course, I have some church announcements for you, okay? Um, these are my disclaimers. First and foremost, I, Sharita Brown, am not an attorney, and I'm not attempting to give any legal advice about the apostille process. These ideas expressed are based on my individual interpretation and understanding about the apostille process and are for educational and entertainment purposes only. So this is my understanding of how the apostille process works. Please do your own due diligence, research, and check with the appropriate offices for your state regarding the apostille process. All right, that concludes your church announcements. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it so you can know how to do an apostille all right so first things first what is an apostille so like i said if you can understand the basics of what is going on then you will know why or that it is at least how i'm able to understand stuff if i can understand what it is i'm doing then it makes more sense for why i have to do it a certain way but if i don't know what the thing is then it's confusing of like why do i have to do it that way why do we have to do it this way but if you can understand the what usually can understand the why and then that leads you to how you're supposed to do things all right so our first definition is what is an apostille basically an apostille certifies or verifies the authenticity of a document that is being used in another country okay the person notarizing or the public official who signed the document is the one being verified or authentic authenticated, okay? So this is going to be important. The person notarizing or the public official who signed the document is the one being verified or often authenticated, okay? You see, I have signed, underlined, okay? These are only for documents sent to countries within the Hague Convention. That's what an apostille is. Documents to non-Hague countries utilize an authentication certificate instead of an apostille. And these words are sometimes used interchangeably, but just know if it's an apostille, it's usually for a Hague country. Authentication usually is for countries outside of the Hague Convention, okay? Now, you might be wondering, what is the Hague Convention? I am so glad that you asked because the Hague Convention was just an agreement made by certain countries that created a uniform process and system for authenticating foreign documents that need to be sent to countries within this agreement. So basically what that means is there were documents being sent to various countries and they had to make sure 
um, these documents that were coming from other countries were actually valid, um, that they were actually authentic. So they came up with a process, okay? And the countries that got together and say, hey, we're going to have a process for doing this or what is what makes up the Hague Convention. So they have a certain streamlined process for how they handle any documents from other countries outside of their own to know that they are um, authentic documents, okay? So that is all the Hague Convention is. All right. Now, we're going to talk about hot Hague countries versus non-Hague countries. What countries are the documents going to is also known as the country of intent. That is a key question that you want to ask because you want to know, is it being sent to a Hague country or a non-Hague country? Now, if it's not being sent to a Hague country, just know that the non-Hague countries do not have a process. They decided they did not want to participate in the convention. And non-Hague countries, the process for getting um, documents authenticated um, it's it's a little bit more in depth. There's more steps that have to be um, put in place to verify that this document is real. Okay, so that's all the difference is between the Hague countries and non-Hague countries. Some countries got together said they're going to streamline the process. Other countries decided not to do that, and they have their own steps and processes for how they handle documents that are coming from um, different countries. Okay, all right now. The Apostille Cheat Code, you know, this is the most important thing, this Apostille Cheat Code. If you can understand this particular concept, you will know how to handle and the steps that you need to take when it comes to doing an Apostille or um, helping to authenticate documents that, are, that need to be used in other countries. So pay attention. If you get this, you will be good, okay? This is your cheat code, all right? The cheat code for Apostilles is... Who signed the documents, okay? Who signed the documents is the cheat code. And what I mean by that, I'm not talking about your client. Your client signed, might sign the documents or whatever. That doesn't mean, um, I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about who signed the documents in terms of, is it was it a notary who signed the document? Was it a state official who signed the document? Or was it a federal official who signed the document? Because whoever signed that document is going to govern how that apostille is handled. And we're gonna get into that even more, okay? But that is the cheat code. Who signed the documents is going to govern how that apostille is handled, all right? If it's a notary, there's certain steps that you will, you will know. The notary signed the document, so this is what I need to do. If it was a state official who signed the document, you'll know, hey, these are the steps I need to do. And is it was it a federal official? If they signed the document, then you'll know what to do, okay? So that's the Apostille Cheat Code. Who signed the documents? Is the Apostille Cheat Code. And once you know what country it's going to as well, you will know how to do what you need to do. So let's talk about local Apostilles. These are documents that originated at the state level. Examples of these can be powers of attorney, um, business formations, and vital records. Um, and the vital records are just like birth certificates, death certificates, marriage certificates, and divorce decrees. Now, these are called, or I'm calling them local documents because they are typically signed by a notary or a state official. So because they are being signed by a notary or state official, the process for these local documents means that you are going to take the documents to the Secretary of State's office. Sometimes they might not be the Secretary of State like for Georgia, it's actually the county clerk's office, but you're going to take it to some state um, office, usually the Secretary of State, and that is who is going to give you the apostille or, or they are going to be authenticating the apostille, okay, or authenticating the documents, okay? So that is all the local apostille means. It's at a state level. So I am a, I am a notary in Georgia and as well as South Carolina, but we're just going to use Georgia. Well, actually, we'll use South Carolina for this example. So if I notarize a document for a client, and they have to use it in another country, then I have to take that document to the South Carolina Secretary of State's office in order for me to obtain an apostille or for me to get an apostille for my client, okay? Now, if it is a federal apostille, these are usually for federal documents such as FBI background checks, um, military documents. These are signed by federal officials, okay? Because they are signed by federal officials, it skips over the state level because federal is higher than the state. So for these, you send the documents to Virginia 
for them to be able to be processed in Washington, D.C. Ultimately, they're going to Washington, D.C., but the address is actually going to be for Virginia, okay? And that is who can issue the apostille, that federal um, Washington, D.C., because it's a federal document. They are the only ones who can um, give you the apostille. You can't take it to the state, okay? So say it's something that, you know, you're a Georgia notary or South Carolina notary or something like that. You can't take it to your South Carolina Secretary of State's office. It has to go to the federal level, okay? Because a federal official signed it and that is who is going to be verifying the authenticity of the document because it came from them. Now, an authentication, these are for the non-hate non countries and with these, you are not getting an apostille. Now, I know this term is used um, interchangeably, apostille authentication, but for the purposes of this training, the authentication is going to be for non-hate countries. And the reason for that is because they are not part of the convention, okay? Now, if it is a state or a local document, you're going to take it to the Secretary of State's office then it must go to D.C., and then it goes to the embassy or the consulate for whatever country it's, it's going to, okay? So remember when I say if, because the authentication requires more steps because they don't have the streamlined process that the Hague countries have. So you have to do more steps for the authentication for, for um, a document that's going to a non-Hague country, you're going to have to go to the Secretary of State's office, then it's going to have to go to D.C., then it has to go to the embassy or consulate. Now, you see why if it was a Hague country, the process is a lot simpler because if it was a Hague country, all you have to do is take it to the Secretary of State and you would be done, all right? Now, for federal documents, what you're going to do is it's a little bit more detailed as well. You're going to take it to D.C. or it has to be sent to D.C. And then it has to go to the embassy or the consulate. If they were a Hague country, the process eliminates a step. It only has to go to um, D.C. and you would have the authentication for it or the apostille for it, okay? So remember, with the authentication for non-Hague countries, it is going to require more steps, Okay. Now, let's get into the type of documents because we briefly touched upon that, public documents, vital records, and federal documents. Um, the public documents are documents that often require notarization. These are typically documents that you're seeing with general notary work. Um, these are like transcripts, school transcripts, powers of attorney, as well as like single status affidavits or any type of affidavit, pretty much. Um, these are the documents that require notarization. And if you are the notary who is notarizing that particular statement, you have to go through your secretary of state's office in order to get the apostille if it is for... Um, a country within the Hague Convention because you were the one who signed the document. Remember the apostille cheat code, okay? Now, for vital records, these are also considered local documents because they're issued at the local level or the state level or whatever. But keep in mind, vital records do not require a notarization because these are birth certificates, death certificates, marriage license, and divorce decrees, okay? And this, that is because most well, I won't say most, all of these documents are issued by some state level official. Like you as the notary cannot issue any of these documents. Someone higher than you, someone who has a state um, position, state level position is the one who issues birth certificates, who issues death certificates, who issues marriage license and divorce decrees. So just remember that. And whatever state issued it, then that's the state it has to go to. So here's an example for you. Let's say you are in, I don't know, let's say you are in Georgia, but, and you have a client who comes to you, comes to your office or meets you at some place in Georgia, and they say, I need my birth certificate um, at Pasil because I'm going to another country or whatever. With that, and you find out that their birth certificate, they were born in Florida. You can't take that birth certificate to the um, to the Georgia Secretary of State's office, or in this case, it's really the county clerk's office, but I don't want to confuse you. But you can't take it to the Georgia State office. You have to take it to that 
um, for the state office because that is where their birth certificate was issued, okay? Even though now they're residing in Georgia, they were actually born in Florida. And now we have to take the document or the document has to be apostilled through Florida, okay? So remember the apostilled cheat code. Who signed that document and where did they sign it? So because some state official in Florida signed that birth certificate, that is where it has to go to be apostilled, all right? Now, up next, we have the federal documents. Remember, federal is always above the state. So um, these documents have to go through DC. And we talk, these are like any um, military documents, like federal um, documents. Um, it just depends on what, what all you get. We I have seen federal background checks more so than anything. So just keep that in mind. It's at a federal level. Now, if it was a state background check, then that is going to have to go at the state level. But if it's a federal background check, then it's going at the federal level. All right. I hope all of this is making sense to you guys. All right. Let's see. We did this. Let's see what question, apostille questions that you might have. The questions that you not, I won't say these are questions that you might have, but these are the questions that you need to be asking your client when they reach out to you and say that they need an apostille. First and foremost, you want to know what country are the documents going to because you want to know if it's Hague or non-Hague because that determines the process. Remember, non-Hague is going to be a little bit more lengthy process because they decided they didn't want a streamlined system like the Hague countries. Next, you also want to know what types of documents there are because do these documents require notarizations um, or are these documents local or federal documents or are they signed by some federal or or a state official, okay? So that helps determine the process too. And if the documents have been notarized, you want to ensure that the notarization is done correctly because this goes back to the apostille cheat code. Who signed the documents is important because that is who is, um, that is what is going to be authenticated. So if you as the notary sign that document, they are authenticating that you are the, a valid person who can do the authentication, okay? So keep that in mind. All right, so it's very important to ensure that the documents have been notarized correctly because if they have not, the Secretary of State's office is not going to accept it and they are going to reject it and you will not be able to do the apostille. So you as a notary want to make sure that you have notarized the documents correctly, but if they're bringing you documents that have already been notarized, you wanna make sure those have been done correctly so you can get an apostille, all right? And you see, I, I wrote it down in the notes. Remember, an apostille is verifying the authenticity of the notary or public official who signed the document. That is the definition of an apostille. Now, another question you wanna ask is, do the documents require translation? If so, that is another process. We won't get into this because this is just the apostille basics, but it usually requires another step that you would have to go through to, in order to get the, um, the documents translated. Another question, the last question you want to ask is how soon does the client need the apostille? Because depending on where it needs to go, it can be, um, it can take a little while. All right, next up, let's quickly talk about pricing. Now, I'm, I, if you've seen any of my pricing videos, y'all already know, I'm not going to tell you what to charge. I usually am telling you how you should charge or whatever. And in this video, for this particular training, I'm telling you things you can, things that you need to consider when it comes to charging. All right. So things to consider when setting your fees is the number of documents, okay? The reason why, if there's multiple documents, each document is going to need an apostille, okay? And that is additional costs, additional fees. You have to check with your Secretary of State's office to see how much they charge for an apostille. Um, also, keep in mind, if it's at the federal level, then they charge um, higher. I want to say it's $20 a document for at the federal level. And if it's a non-Hague country, then when I had checked, it was like $50 a document. But keep in mind the process for a non-Hague country it may have to go to the state level and, and then go to the federal level and then go to um, the embassy or consulate. So if your state charges $10, the federal level is $20, and then the um, 
embassy consulate level is $50 for a non hay country, you already have $80 invested in that particular transaction and you want to make sure it is done correctly, all right? And because if not, you're going to have to resend it back. And that is not including your shipping fees, your notarization fees, that kind of thing. So you want to make sure you're charging appropriately. All right. So... And we already, and with me saying that, I'm trying to touch upon some of the other things I'm going to talk about when considering the pricing. So number of documents, if it's a Hague versus non-Hague country, because non-Hague countries, it's going to cost you a little bit more in order to do that process. Is it local versus federal documents? So you'll know where you need to send them. Think about the shipping fees. Um, do you have to ship it to the Secretary of State's office, to DC, to the embassy? Does the client want you to ship it back to them? Consider all of those things. Consider your travel fees, especially if you're traveling to your local Secretary of State's office in order to, to do this. Sorry, guys. So take all of that into consideration. Um, courier fees. This is if you're shipping it to multiple states or trying to use a notary buddy, you want to know what their fees are for them to go to the Secretary of State's office. Because just like in that example where I said I had a client um, that approached me in Georgia or a client comes to me and I'm in Georgia, they need their birth certificate done in Florida. Um, do you have a notary buddy who can get it to you? Um, get it notarized, not notarized, excuse me, of APA sealed a little bit faster in Florida. Because the other thing you want to think about is when you go to these different Secretary of State sites in South Carolina, I can walk in and get it done the same day. Now, if I mail it in, that could take like a week and a half to two weeks or whatever versus me walking in, I'm going to get it the same day. So you want to take that into consideration depending on how soon your client needs it. Like, can you have somebody walk it in and you get it back the same day so that they can get it to you within a couple of days versus you mailing it in and it's going to take two to three weeks for you to get it back, all right? So that's when you want to take into consideration the courier fees. Also take into consideration the translation fees if they need their document translated, um, the notarization fees that are just, just your usual fees that you would charge for notarization, the apostille fees for your Secretary of State's office as well as for DC and possibly the embassy or consulate if you're having to do a non hague country. Are they requiring you to print documents? So what do you charge for printing different things for you? for your client and any incidental fees. By that, I mean like money orders. Typically I will get a money order to send to um, the Secretary of State's office or to pay at the Secretary of State's office. Um, so remember, it's usually a fee associated when you obtain a money order. So those are just some things to consider when it comes to apostille. So you wanna make sure you price it right. So, cause if not, if you have a federal document and you only priced it, at um seventy dollars or whatever then you only <laughs> you you and you and you drove there to the secretary of state's office and maybe it took you 30 minutes um you you may or may not be making a whole lot of money so just take that into consideration all right all right next up um some of the definitions we're going to cover a few definitions that i think are important or whatever i'm not going to go through all of these but just some definitions for you to remember um like i said this is the abcs of apostilles you got to understand the basics in order for you to be able to apply it and do more high level stuff all right so an apostille it is just the authentication of a signature of a notary or public official who has signed a document that is being sent to a Hague Convention country. That is what an apostille is. And remember, it's authenticating the signature of a notary or a public official. We want to make sure the person who signed this document is authentic. Who They are who they say they are and they are legit, okay? Now, what is an authentication? Authentication, remember, this usually applies to non-hate countries, although it can be used interchangeably with an apostille. But remember, for the purposes of this training, the authentication is for non-hate countries. And it is the process to verify the authenticity of a signature of a notary or public official who has signed a document that is being sent to a non-hate country. All right. Now, 
Lastly, the Hague Convention. What is that? It was it was just an agreement made between some countries that created a uniform process and system for authenticating foreign documents that need to be sent to these countries. All right. So if they're not part of the Hague Convention, guess what? They don't have a streamlined process. What does that mean? That means that you just gonna have to take more steps um, for them to even consider using that document in their country. All right. But if it's part of the Hague Convention. They streamlined that process. They made it a little bit easier for us, all right? So these are the key definitions. If anything I say twice, anything I'm saying more than once, it is important for you to remember, okay? And last but not least, remember the Apostille cheat code, okay? Who signed the documents? I can't emphasize that enough. Who signed the documents? Was it the notary who signed the documents? Was it a state official? Was it a federal official? Whoever signed the documents will always govern how the apostille is handled in addition to what country it is being sent to. But you need to know, you can know that it's, it's going to a certain country, but if you don't know or understand who signed the documents, then yeah, a lot of that is going to be lost on you. All right. So that is pretty much it. I hope that this was helpful to you. I hope this helps you start your apostille, including that in part of your notary business. Um, so yeah, that is it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. All right, until next time, take care, everyone.